Unit 3, Presentation 3, A Life Story. The life story is really the centerpiece of the parole packet because it puts flesh on the bones of the person who's coming before the parole commission and it situates their conviction and their incarceration within the grander narrative of their life. So a life story is going to cover the person's past, their present and their future. There's actually a lot of data showing that there's multiple benefits to people who put pen to paper in order to write their life story down. This is true whether someone's incarcerated or not. And it seems that this is because it is a way of processing things that have happened in life. Um, in particular, it can be useful in processing trauma and helping people to make sense of events in the past, almost from the perspective of an outsider looking in at them. And it's also a way of overcoming anxiety about the future by formulating a plan. Um, because the more a person has a future plan in place, the more likely it is that their hopes and dreams are going to come about. Now, if there is time, it would make sense to approach the life story, therefore, as something that the person is doing for themselves. This could be done um, through journaling or just taking the time to, to write out the past, present, and then the future hopes and dreams. That work can then be adapted for the purpose of the parole packet, which is, of course, a life story that's being told for a specific audience. So resources for writing a life story, because it's it can feel daunting to think that I have to write my whole life story down. So this is something we are going to continually try to improve on in this curriculum by giving signposts to other resources and bringing in outside expertise. Um, however, here are some suggestions for now. Journaling, just trying to journal for five minutes a day or so in a stream of consciousness may help you generate material that's going to be relevant to the life story. Or another technique is to begin by simply writing down five or six words that represent important experiences or themes in a person's life and then taking one word at a time and writing a sentence or even a short passage about it. So beginning very, very small and, and growing from there. Another approach would be to use the framework form, which is on the Google Drive as part of prepare materials. And that's a way of breaking the life down into different phases and epochs and down into significant events. So it's sort of like the previous idea of taking words, but instead of that, it's more of a structured, these are the main things that happen at this point in life, and these are the main things that happen at this point in my life, and then from there you can flesh out. For parole advocates who are helping people with their life stories, the most important thing is to remember whose life story this is, who is going up for parole. Do not take over and try to write their life story for them. Now, if the person who um, you're helping has limited writing ability, then begin by interviewing them. You could use the framework form, which could be done through the mail or do it by phone or an in-person visit. But um, the flesh out some ideas from the interview and then put together a sort of bare bones draft and give that draft back to them and tell them they can scribble on it, change it, but to pick out any errors, anything they're not comfortable with, and then take that back and do the next draft and, and so on and so forth until you have between you something that um, people are, are happy, represents what they want to say. Um, as a parole advocate, you've got to be really sensitive, particularly when dealing with traumatic events in a person's life, which oftentimes for people who are incarcerated, there is a lot of trauma in, in their background. And so if you don't have um, skills or experience in, in discussing trauma with people, then just tread very carefully with that. Um, also be sensitive about how people are going to articulate how their conviction and incarceration are part of their border life story. And Finally, just remember that the Parole Commission has all the details of the crime in the file in front of them. So 
you also have to be careful of going too far in the other direction of not encouraging people to be specific about what happened. Because if you end up with a life story that comes across as not being fully honest, then it's going to detract from the sense of the person having um, taken responsibility and being remorseful, which is something that the parole commission is looking for in deciding whether or not to give parole. Length. So it's an essay rather than a dissertation. Um, I'm suggesting a range of 1,000 to 3,000 words. I, I have read people's life stories in parole packets significantly longer than that. And actually, if they're well written and, and well presented, then they read very quickly and, and engagingly. I think the way they are typed helps with that. Don't use a tiny font with lines spaced really close together that just is off-putting to the reader. Better to have more pages with an easier read with, in terms of the font than to have two pages that's just chock-a-block full of words on each page. I think it's a good idea to use subheadings. Again, that's a stylistic thing and as to um, whatever works is fine, but it might help to break it down into the phases of life, into those big epochs. Or you could um, do it in terms of themes. So one theme could be a struggle with alcohol, one thing could be family life and parenting, uh, one, one thing could be future plans. Um, there's different ways of approaching it. Optional, but some photos could be incorporated into the life story specifically to illustrate certain points in it. Or you can just have a different section in the parole packet that has a couple of photos, either just one on the front cover or one or two photo pages that um, put faces on some of the characters maybe who are mentioned in the life story.